This video is a continuation from the previous video. <clears throat> in these paintings, I mean, in these photos down here, she's painted on top of the photograph. So she printed out the photograph and the, it looks like used watercolor on top of them to create these really cool works of art. So you can do that, right? You, it's called mixed media. Mixed media is always cool. Well, not always. I mean, it has to be done more right, right? But you, you get you get the idea. Um, this is a, a photo that they uh, the person printed out and then hand colored. Um, you can start off with it looks like it was it was a sepia toned print and not a a black and white print. And sepia toned means uh, it's a sa shade of brown, which is why it's got some. I think it's her skin color sepia. So and then they colored on top of it. And it creates this really cool retro effect. This obviously is a photograph that had painting on top of it. They used paint on top of it. Um, and you can see this represents the gold, represents mud in the dirt. And it's really, really beautiful. It's just a beautiful artwork. The photo on its own would have been great. But what they did here was just create such an original composition that you could hang, this would hang in a museum easily. I mean, this is a museum quality work of art. And they just use it with, uh, looks like watercolor, I mean, um, acrylic paint. It's like acrylic paint. And another one, this is, I mean, really getting outside the box by painting on top of the photograph. And this was this was done with <clears throat> I can just tell you because I I came from the era <laughs> of print film where you would shoot a roll of film get it printed and then they would print on print paper on photo photography paper um, so this has been printed on photography paper because the photography paper has a coating on it and if you bend it it cracks like this. And this was bent on purpose, I think maybe, or they just took an old photo they had and just, it was, it was, you know, pretty beat up. It looks like it was aged naturally. This doesn't look intentional. Just old photo that, you know, just got abused and they painted on top of it uh, with acrylics and created this original work of art and it's great. Uh, paint people and then photograph them. Some examples, this woman uh, was painted with white paint and teal paint and photographed. And you could tell it was cold because look at her skin. <laughs> She's got goosebumps. Another uh, very, very detailed painting, treating a, treating a person as a canvas. And what's really beautiful about this is they, they pulled the colors out of her eye, the white and the blue. And then of course added the red, the yellow and the purple. See a little bit of green back here for contrast. It's pretty cool. And when you do stuff like this, you always want the background out of focus. And that will happen with a if you with your cell phone and you focus on someone's face because the <clears throat> the aperture on a cell phone is between 1.4 and 2.8. You're gonna get this background blurred out like this because you don't want. I mean, this could be debatable. I think they already have too much texture back here, but because it's blurred out, it, it's okay. You want that contrast between all this detail and no background. And they just put gold paint across his face and because of how dark he and the background are, it really caused that paint to stand out and made his eyes the focal point of the picture. This is beautiful. Um, take photos using a scanner. Um, I don't know if everybody has this anymore or not, but um, she used this. She had she has a bipolar personality disorder, and she used this to represent how she felt. And what she did was she used the scanner right for the copy machine, and she moved while it was scanning to create. And when you do stuff like this, you're never going to get it right the first time until you're really, really good and have lots and lots of experience at doing something. And then you know what to do because your brain has that experience to use. And then you got lucky. <laughs> most of the time, most artists, even those of us that have been shooting for a very long time, for decades, still take multiple shots 
to get one good one. Okay, so she probably took quite a few with these in order to get this to work out, and it's really cool. Um, here's another one that was done using a scanner. Um, and that was done using a scanner. And they probably draped a black cloth over it. It's really beautiful. Put objects on top of photographs and re-photograph them. Um, in this case, I used an egg and ketchup. And it's really funny. I recently saw someone using this as their profile photo. Uh, bubble gum to join the two kissers together. Spaghetti. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever heard the term spaghetti western, but my guess is this is a play on that. So cowboy with a with a spaghetti. Um, also kind of like um, Cousin It, the long hair. Okay, there's something called re-photography. It's, it's where you take a modern photo in the same position of a historic photo and then blend them together in an interesting way. Now, there are a lot of photographs that you can get off the historic registry for free so that you will have license to use them. Make sure you are not using other people's photographs if you plan to sell your work. You can use them for educational purposes um, only. But the minute you're using them for a client and they're paying you money, you cannot use someone else's work unless, in this case, it is free public access. And then you can use these. And this is New York, the Flatiron Building. Um, that someone has blended together and in, in using Photoshop, old photo and the new and the new photo, and it's really clever. It's a really, really very creative way to show then and now time warp, so to speak. Uh, the pharmacy, and this is the <clears throat> um, Reichstag in um, Berlin, and the the black and white part that you see here is from the, the, the Nazis or the Gestapo. I can't tell them apart to be honest with you. But anyway, so that's back when, no, I think that was, I think it was Hitler. Um, cause that's who the, who the building was representative of. And so it shows the old and the new cause it's been completely renovated and it's been turned into a museum. When I was there um, in, when was I there? 1998. Um, it had a fence. The Reichstag had been burned. It had a fence around it. And it was just sitting there, it had graffiti all over it, and it had been burned, and plants were growing all, around, all over it. And there was a big sign showing that they were going to renovate it into this. And of course, that was a long time ago, so it has been renovated. Um, project images onto people, objects, or scenes. Um, I'm trying to think what, what resources you guys have to do this besides, um, we have projectors in the classroom, but not access to classrooms right now. So, um, this person used a, a projector and the person that they projected onto was moving around enough to create some really interesting abstract patterns. And in this one over here, well, in both of them, everything's blurry. And normally, you generally want to avoid that, right? We've talked about that. But the reason it works in these cases is because the figures are, are recognizable as people. And that's when you can get away with everything being out of, out of focus when it's still recognizable for what it is. That's beautiful. She's got multiple things being like two different projectors being broadcast on her, but that's that's really cool. Um, yeah, because you can see the one face right here on her shirt, and then there's another face right here, and then it's just the, the beautiful colors. Um, these are projected faces on rocks. These are rocks by the shore side, and faces, there's a head sideways here, and here that are projected onto those rocks to create that shot. 
very, very, very creative. It's not a great photo, but it's very creative. Deliberately overspose a shot, creating what's called high key photography. So she's up against a, a white background and she's got very white skin and then the photo is overexposed but then brought into probably Photoshop and adjusted so that you still have dark in her hair. And it's just a very soft, romantic, beautiful portrait. Uh, I, love, I love stuff like this, it's very abstract, right? We can still know it's a person but it's now been overexposed enough that it's very artistic and interesting and creative. Uh, this is Venice and they overexposed everything but probably went back and darkened up these areas so that you still would have something black in the scene. Because remember we need, in order to create uh, a strong photo, you need something to be pure white and something to be pure black somewhere in your composition and in this case they this they have this very flat scene but if they hadn't allowed these to be dark it would be it would have been a very boring flat photo you need that that little bit of contrast to create that sense of high key okay we're going to stop here and continue in the next video